I'm extremely excited about space and space exploration. I mean, there is nothing more exciting than just going out there and being among the stars. As you might have guessed, this video is gonna be a little bit of rocket science. I'm going to discuss the main challenges of chips in space. So what are the radiation hardened chips? Which chips are used in rockets like SpaceX Falcon and Dragon and also which chips are used by NASA? I have to warn you, it's gonna be a little bit long but very fun video. Traditionally, chips which are used in spacecrafts are far away from the current state of the art. They are lagging by several generations compared to modern commercial CPUs and memory. For instance, the International Space Station, which was launched in 1998, still runs on old 20 MHz Intel microprocessor from 1988. Can you imagine? So why building chips for space is a rocket science? In space, where the temperature can approach over 2000 degrees Celsius, the radiation is deadly and you will be traveling at speeds up to 30,000 km per hour, we don't want a microcontroller to shut down once all of a sudden. Traditionally, the chips which go to space must be radiation hardened. Otherwise, they may fail due to the effects of cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation originates from our own Sun as well as from distant stars, exploding supernovas and black holes within our own galaxy and other distant galaxies. We don't experience this strong radiation here on Earth because Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere provides very good shielding, so protection against cosmic radiation. However, for instance, Mars lacks a global magnetic field and has only about 1% as much atmosphere as Earth does. So radiation is a problem not only on the way to Mars, but at Mars as well. Those galactic cosmic rays are one of the main troublemakers for space electronics. There are two ways how the radiation can affect a space chip. On one hand, radiation can cause instantaneous, so completely random failure. But on the other hand, radiation tends to accumulate in electronic chips over time. So with time, the risk of failure increases. A cosmic ray striking a computer in space may cause three kinds of events. The first one is causing a random transient signal at some node of the logic. For instance, input or output of the logic gate temporary switches, which may lead to the wrong computational results. Radiation strike can also cause a single event upset also known as a bit flip, when state of the register randomly turns from 1 to 0 or vice versa. This type of error is typically a soft error, which means that the device itself wasn't damaged and bit change can be overwritten to the correct value at the next cycle. Radiation may trigger even more dangerous event called latch up. This event leads to a short circuit between different nodes, for instance supplies. And it may cause a permanent chip damage and even lead to the chip destruction due to the overcurrent. So, this kind of bit flipping and latch-ups caused by cosmic radiation are not only theoretical events. Actually, many of such events have already been documented. Phobos Grant mission to Mars, attempted by Russia about 10 years ago, failed because of such an event. The spacecraft was supposed to land on the Mars moon Phobos, gather the soil samples and get them back to Earth. Instead, it ended up drifting in the low Earth orbit because the onboard computer crashed just before it could fire up the engines to send the spacecraft to Mars. The root cause of the failure is heavy charged particles that hit the chip and led to a latch up in the Phobos Grant M22 computer. In this way, a computer error just killed the mission, which was like several decades in the making. Phobos Grant team tried to boost the chip performance and avoid red hard chips to cut the costs 
as you can see it didn't really work out in the space. During Space Shuttle STS-48 mission, an experiment was carried out to identify the frequency of these random bit flips. During this 5 days mission, there were 161 individual bit flips detected. IBM studied this topic as well, and they identified that computers typically experience about one cosmic ray induced error per 256 megabytes of RAM per month. So modern technologies with smaller dimensions are actually suffering even more. Experiments show multiple bit upsets from a single particle strike. Rad hard chips means that chips are radiation hardened by design, fabricated using specific process and packaged in a special package which is needed to withstand 40 times the radiation of an ordinary chip. Modern red hard chips are typically developed in so-called silicon on insulator process. SOI technology involves the use of a silicon wafer that has a layer of oxide buried below the transistor layer and from the substrate. When radiation strikes the silicon, it can create mobile charge that interferes with the chip's operation. However, in an SOI chip, the oxide layer prevents radiation-induced charge from getting into the transistor layer. So, SOI chips are inherently more tolerant of radiation than orbitary silicon chips. Similarly to automotive chips, in space electronic, redundancy is the must. And one popular technique to cope with is random bit flips called triple mode redundancy. Essentially, the random failure free operation is ensured by integrating three computers in one. If one computer experiences a soft error, other two will overrule it. In such a system, two out of three redundant computers must fail in order to cause a whole system failure. This triple mode redundancy is reported to be used by SpaceX to make system radiation tolerant and more reliable. The flip side of this technique is, of course, the increase of Aryan power by about a factor of three, and the power is essential for many battery-powered space missions. Another effective and also very popular technique is so-called Error Correcting Code, or ECC. Basically, ECC is implemented to catch and correct the corrupted information in the memory. Error Correcting Codes store redundant data in order to be able to recover this information, even when some of the data has been corrupted. Another way to improve radiation robustness of chip is to use ceramic packages. The main advantage is that it reduces the rat hard requirements to the chips itself, potentially allowing to use Earth's grade chips. However, such a packaging is really expensive and ceramic package chips are typically like at least one generation behind their equivalents in plastic encapsulated parts. Now to the commercial space. Commercial space companies like SpaceX are typically using many of the shelf components in their onboard systems for mainly two reasons – costs and performance. Radiation-hardened chips are significantly more expensive compared to the consumer chips, and they are also lagging in performance. Commercial of the shelf chips are used for non-critical and short-duration space missions. For instance, in the famous first stage of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, the chips do not really need to be radiation hardened, because the first stage of the rocket does not go to the orbit, but only travels 80 kilometers skywards and then, after separation, returns back to the Earth. That is partially how SpaceX can drive the costs down with respect to the other spaceflight companies. Now I would like to discuss the approach of the SpaceX, because SpaceX is 
clearly had in a commercial space and it's super interesting how they build their space on board computers. As SpaceX is a private company, it is really hard to find exact information about the hardware they use because they do not reveal it. Anyway, I was able to find quite some information. As I've already mentioned, redundancy in space is a must. And in case of SpaceX, chip's redundancy is built in from the very foundation. So there are 54 chips in SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Those include different types of processors and microcontrollers. Each Falcon 9 stage has stage-level flight computers to handle stage control functions. They've got three microcontrollers on each engine. So each Merlin engine is controlled by three chips implementing redundancy. All the chips are dual-core x86 processors which run identical software and constantly check and compare among each other. The Dragon spacecraft runs on Linux with the flight software implemented in C++. According to John Murator, who is the former launch director at SpaceX, SpaceX doesn't use rat hard chips because they're too expensive and difficult to upgrade. SpaceX uses modern off-the-shelf chips and instead implement system-level radiation-hardened design. This is a significant paradigm shift in space electronics and the key difference between traditional space and commercial space as we know it. Actually, SpaceX employing all the techniques which we have just discussed, so error correcting code and triple mode redundancy, as well as special radiation hardened packaging for selective electronic components. But they skip rat hard chips. Now to the real world examples. Some time ago, NASA revealed that the first SpaceX commercial resupply mission to ISS experienced some anomalies. It turned out that they've actually lost one of the three flight computers, a Dragon cargo vessel, due to a radiation hit. As we know, the overall mission was in the end successful. What actually happens in the case when one of the computers is down? So there are three computers with uh, two cores each. For each computation or decision, the result from both cores of the computers must match. Further, the results of two out of three computers must agree to provide a new command to microcontrollers controlling things like engine and green fins. So, if SpaceX chip takes a hidden memory, the computer detects it and repairs it with the ECC, and there is no harm done. But getting a radiation hit in other circuits in the flight computer may cause a random bit flip, which may lead to the wrong decision. If the other two computers still agree, the result of the first one is ignored and it is set to reboot. This is pretty much what happened during the SpaceX mission, according to the John Murator. According to John Murator and Elon Musk himself, SpaceX chips are not radiation hardened, and each chip doesn't go through the screening for radiation hardened parts. However, they do test the complete system. They hit it hard with radiation to understand how the complete system cope with the radiation environment and whether their approach works. The key goal of SpaceX is the most cost-effective and fast access to space. While radiation-hardened chips are still lagging by generations and they are much more expensive. However, this approach is only valid for short missions. It is not sufficient to run the ISS or travel to Mars. The trip to Mars is 480 million kilometers and it would take seven months one way. During this time, the probability of the random bit flips is higher, as well as radiation can be accumulated in the chips. So using radiation-hardened chips becomes critical, crucial for the success of the mission. I think SpaceX is likely to use more radiation-hardened chips for their longer missions 
as well as for the awaited mission to Mars. Especially as red heart chips are getting better every year and in many aspects closing the gap to consumer chips. So, as I mentioned before, the space industry is going through a huge transformation right now. And this, of course, has an effect on the space chip industry. Now, let's have a look on which space chips are out there right now. So, SpaceX is a private company and doesn't disclose much about the chips which they use. However, NASA is a government agency, so I found a lot of interesting information about NASA chips and research projects. And I think it is nicely illustrates the overall trend in the space chip industry. The first NASA project, which I would like to highlight, is actually called High Performance Space Computing. Surprise, surprise! The goal of the project is to replace decades-old spaceflight processors with modern SOCs developed to be radiation-hardened. These chips will allow onboard autonomy, astronaut assistance and high-bandwidth sensor data processing. All of this will potentially make possible intelligent spacecraft. As you can see here, the HPSC design is actually a chip lab containing different computing subsystems. It is pretty much organized as a conventional SOC for autonomous driving. High-speed processing subsystem contains 8 cores of Red Heart ARM Cortex-A53 64-bit processor running at 800 MHz. Real-time processing subsystem is based on multiple dual-core Cortex-R52 with shared on-chip memory and external DDR4 memory, as well as high-speed IOS providing bandwidth up to 60 gigabit per second. Cortex-R architecture is widely used in robotics and autonomous driving applications here on Earth, and the applications in space are similar. This chip is a radiation-hardened chip with low-level redundancy and restricted fabrication, which dictates restrictions in clocking frequencies as well as in IO bandwidth. NASA expects to get flight-ready HPSC by the end of 2022, so it is likely that this SOC can be used for future Mars rover missions as well as taking humans back to the Moon, intended somewhere in the end of 2024. Another exciting ongoing project of NASA is called SpaceCube. SpaceCube is a family of FPGA-based onboard science data processing systems. This is intended to boost computing capability and to enable onboard autonomy and artificial intelligence in space. The goal is to achieve similar to on Earth computers' performance in terms of compute and power, while still maintaining space-grade reliability. The approach which NASA is taking here is quite different from the high-performance space computing program. They are building a hybrid system which contains space-grade FPGAs, CPUs and DSPs. The main idea is that there are different applications in space and some of them would benefit from CPU-based computing, but others require FPGA-based acceleration. So SpaceCube can address all of them. SpaceCube is actually a family of devices, and right now the third generation is being developed. By the way, the first and the second generation of space cubes are already out there, circling the orbit at ISS. So, the architecture of the third generation, so-called SpaceCube V3, contains as a base Xilinx Kintex Ultrascale FPGA and Xilinx Zinc SOC on quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 processor. The space is extendable with plug-in FPGA modules as well as CPU cores. Interestingly, the latest presentation from NASA shows that this high-performance space computer can be also integrated inside SpaceCube V3. SpaceCube also contains large arrays of shared RAM and flash memory, as well as high-speed multi-gigabit IOS. 
It is intended to achieve a compute performance of 3.4 threading operations per second, so tops for FPGA-based compute, and about two tops for CPU-based compute, which is three decades ahead in performance compared to the conventional state-of-the-art radiation-hardened processors. The first SpaceCube V3 prototypes were already presented this year and it targets wide spectrum of missions at Earth's orbit, as well as Moon and Mars missions. Among confirmed is space test program at ISS in 2023 and investigation of Venus atmosphere in 2029. You've probably heard about the Mars rover missions like Spirit, Opportunity, and Curiosity, and the recent one, Perseverance rover, which was landed on the Mars planet earlier this year. So I was curious on which chips these rovers run and also which compute power do they have. So let's look into the latest rover Perseverance, which was launched in 2020 on Atlas V rocket. The latest rover runs on two RAT 750 chips clocked at 200 MHz. It is actually the same CPU which was used in Curiosity rover about 10 years ago. And the rest of the CPU-related hardware is pretty much the same. Basically, a 20 years old hardware which costs a lot, like $200,000. Boring! What is more interesting instead is that new rover features 23 cameras and onboard computer vision system trying to make sense of what rover sees before sending it back to Earth. Hardware acceleration for computer vision and HAI is based on Xilinx Radhard FPGA featuring Vertex 5 QV and Vertex 2 products. This Xilinx Vertex 5 QV is a chip from 2011, fabricated in 65 nanometer technology, and it is featuring 130,000 reconfigurable logic cells and up to 450 MHz DSP at about 10 watts power consumption. One of the most powerful RAT-hard processor available on the market today is RAT5445 by BAE Systems. It is actually a system on chip fabricated in 45 nanometer process. It features a 64-bit quad-core processor clocked at 462 MHz with shared on-chip memory, high-speed DDR3 memory, and 20-lane IOS with 5 gigabit per second bandwidth. The compute performance of the chip RAT5445 is up to 5.6 gig operations per second or 3.7 gigaflops per second at about 20 watts of power consumption, which is quite a lot for a space system. In comparison, the power consumption of quad-core i5 running at 3.8 gigahertz in a 13-inch MacBook Pro is 28 watts. On Earth, under intensive computational workloads, fans of MacBook immediately kick in to cool the system down. However, in space, heat dissipation is a real issue, since fans won't do anything and only if you introduce heat sinks it will still take significant time to cool the system down. Moreover, some of the missions have tight energy budgets so they simply cannot afford power-hungry processors like RAT 5545. However, it is possible that exactly this RAT hard chip 5545 will be chosen by SpaceX for their long-time mission to Mars. On the other hand, Xilinx is developing new generation of high-performance FPGA-based hardware accelerators and SOCs for space applications. Today's available products like Kintex Ultrascale FPGAs used in SpaceCube V3 developed in 20 nanometer CMOS offering up to 5.7 TOPS peak compute 
and 400 gigabit per second aggregated IP bandwidth in space. These chips are targeted for a wide range of artificial intelligence and machine learning applications for future space endeavors. Anyways, radiation-hardened chips are useful for more than just deep space application. Actually, here on down on the Earth, we have relatively low radiation, but with higher altitude, the radiation increases. Actually, there are about 30 times higher chances of random failure happening in airplane electronics rather than on Earth. That's why rat hard chips are also used for aerospace electronics. Rat hard chips are also needed around particle accelerators and other similar high energy devices. And unfortunately, it is possible that changing environmental conditions here on Earth may one day make rat hard chips applicable to our daily lives. I mean, due to the factors like heightened solar radiation, there is more radiation on Earth today than our ancestors used to deal with. There are actually many things which I haven't covered in the scope of this video because I had to just skip it because the video is already pretty long. I could talk more about the trends in space chip industry, like about chips built by microchips and Varado, and maybe I could talk more about FPGA built by Xilinx, but I might be making another part of this video in the near future. Make sure to give this video a like and consider subscribing to this channel. I'm thinking of making a video comparison of AI machine learning hardware, like a comparison between Dojo and Google's TPU, GraphCore and Cerebras, but honestly it is hard in this case to make a fair apple to apple comparison. Let me know which videos you would like to see in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!